Thanks, Lauren, for the introduction, and thanks, GreenViz, for having me. We all care about scaling global circularity, and so I thought I'd share some brief insights about network effects in the human brain and how it applies to scaling a circular economy. So that's me. Before founding and leading Reaply, I studied the brain and more specifically, how we can slow or prevent the pro progression of Parkinson's disease, though I did those studies in a, in a real life lab. One of the overarching messages I took from my PhD studies about the brain is this amazing network of super connectivity. By now, I know that we all have heard the term network effect, but what does network effect really mean? A businessman or woman might talk about the network effect as value proportional to the percentage of users or subscribers. An investigator might look at the network effect under the microscope of information, for instance, the gathering of intelligence or records to build a stronger case over time. Maybe your grandmother mother thinks of a TV network, like her favorite soap opera, or mine, The Price is Right. I think of a network effect like a good party. The more people that join, the better time it is for everyone. When I think of the ultimate network for us to mimic as we scale circularly, circularly, I, as a card-carrying neuroscientist, think of the brain. There are about 100 billion neurons within the brain. Even the most advanced supercomputers in the world are dwarfed by the brain's network of neurons. Brain regions, or lobes, act as information hubs where billions of neurons terminate each with meaning and purpose. What constitutes a termination point and what constitutes a link to another neuron is clearly defined in the human brain. Indeed, neurons don't communicate information or network without connections. It's estimated that there are about seven quadrillion neuronal connections or synapses in the human brain. Of a three-year-old, Sometimes these connections are local and sometimes not. Optimal brain function cannot exist without the careful balance and orchestration between the synaptic connect these synaptic connections. These connections and synapses, synapses are plastic, meaning they can change over time because survival depends on the ability to learn and adapt according to your environment. You might even say that the brain, which is a closed loop system, isn't exactly circular. Microcircuits here in a sagittal view of the brain show that proper brain function isn't just about the number of individual neurons or termination points. Rather, it's about the number of synaptic connections which carry important information and relevant to the endpoint. You see, what really drives circularity is not the number of players, but rather the information shared through the connection of those players. Take for example, a single connection between engineers at a biotechnology company and a utilities company with dependent resource needs. Or another, Take, for example, the connection between scientists at those companies. Though the players are finite, the possibilities to share and connect, like the brain, are nearly infinite. As a young faculty member, I would have to, unfortunately, give the global circular progress to date a low grade, an F minus to be exact. I'm harsh, I know. Today, the world is only 8.6% circular. And that's not because we haven't tried. We have, here we are. That's because in order to scale a global circular, a circular economy, we must first build a connected economy, like the network of the brain. To enable global material and resource flow, we need to build a digital infrastructure to connect the world, all of the world, to drive circular principles. Just like neurons in the human brain, 
everybody won't be participating in the circular economy all the time, but they should be connected to it to create the most efficient path for reuse, to stimulate innovation, to boost socioeconomic growth in communities left behind, and yes, to save our planet. Just as a quick stat, our circulatory sponsors alone spent $38 billion in PPE, not face masks, but property, plant, and equipment annually. Let me say that again. There's $38 billion in IT equipment, building materials, office infrastructure used at each of these organizations leading the charge of circularity, not to mention the goods they use in manufacturing. So as a neuroscientist that wants to see a skilled circular economy akin to the network of the human brain, I task you all with a simple yet insightful question. When asking how circular is your organization, first ask, how connected is your organization? Thank you. Be well, get connected.